Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Claudalicious and today we're talking wedding planning. Today I'm gonna to be walking you through the first four major steps to planning a wedding. So I'm still planning my wedding right now, but I've already gotten past that like first stage where you're kind of confused and you don't really know where to go from there. So I thought it would be really cool for me guys to share my experience with you. So first things first, the absolutely first step you have to do is make a wedding email. I made a Gmail account for me and my fiance and I just use kind of like what our wedding hashtag would sound something like. And you do this so that anytime you sign up for anything or have anything sent through email, you send it to the wedding email. That way you and your fiance can both log into it on your guys' phones and you can both see the most up-to-date information. It's also really fun because you can send it photos of you guys and memories of you guys planning and years down the line you can log back into this email and relive all the fun planning memories. It literally takes a minute and it is so worth it. It helps so much, it keeps everything so much more organized and it makes memories. Step two is make a wedding binder. This is so important because you're gonna have so many things to put in it that you need to have one designated place for everything wedding related. All you gotta do to make your wedding binder is... I used a one and a half inch binder that I got from Staples and I went ahead and made this cover page off of Canva. I used kind of like the detail style that we're gonna use for the wedding and also the wedding colors that we both liked. And of course I added both of our names and just kind of made a nice sheet that I would want to look at a lot. And once that's finished, you just go ahead and slide that into the cover and voila, it's customized. Next, I also added my soon to be last name onto the bind just to kind of bring the whole binder together and make it feel more legit. So once you do that, you're gonna open it up and add some dividers. I recommend using eight dividers for the main things of a wedding. Um, that being the venue, the ceremony, invites, food and cake, photos and video, flowers, outfits, and honeymoon. So just gonna pop that into the binder. Once that's done, you should just go ahead and add sheets of paper in between each one and then a big stack in the front so you can jot down any notes or ideas that you have. And if you don't have a calendar, I would definitely recommend downloading one off of the internet and putting it in the front. I use this happy planner for everything. My fiance has a smaller one as well. So I just keep this with my binder at all times. And if you do download one, just put it right there in the front so you can see it. Making a binder is super fun and it's a great second step to get you into that wedding mode. Step number three, which is one of the most important steps in my opinion for any time you're planning anything, is to sit down with your partner and plan a budget. Budgets are super important because not everybody has a disposable income. And even if you do have a disposable income, it's just really smart to know what you're getting yourself into. Weddings can be super expensive and if you don't wanna break the bank, having a budget is essential. You can also look online to find some templates on making a budget. But for me personally, I made my own budget because I didn't want to put money into something that I'm trying to use to save money. So let's get into making the budget. So obviously we're gonna title it budget. For the categories I used reception and that included both the ceremony and reception venues. Then I did food, decor, photos, video, drinks, bouquets and boutonnieres, basically any flower things, my dress, my tux, the invites, the DJ slash band, the sweets cart or sweets table, of course the wedding cake, and the rings. Some stuff I didn't designate a category for but is still important are stuff like party gifts, vendor gratuity, officiant, and wedding favors. It's also smart to add another section for other things that might rise up that are more marriage related and not wedding oriented, such as move-in fees or any savings that you and your fiance want to have after the wedding. This should, can also include the honeymoon. A lot of people don't plan to save money for the honeymoon, but I see it as part of the wedding, so you should definitely account money for it. Lastly, you should add a miscellaneous section just for anything else that might come up. This would kind of be like the end savings thing where if you and your fiance had any extra cash, you should just send it into this section, which could be for your officiant or other tips for vendors. After you do this, you and your fiance will discuss everything, how much you feel comfortable paying for each and just kind of ballpark it. 
And then once you do all that, you're gonna go ahead and add it up and see your total. After this, me and my fiance decided how many months we were waiting to get married and split it up per the month to see how much we had to put away to get to our total budget. It's also smart to think of the average cost of a wedding in your state. For me, that would be California. So I just really wanted to know what other people were paying around me. And of course, you can definitely go above or below the average. It's totally based on preference and whatever you and your partner feel comfortable with. And throughout the planning process, whenever you book or pay for anything, go ahead and add the price next to the budget price just so you can see if you're on track or if you need to make any adjustments. It's a really good idea to sit down with your partner and make this budget together because one of the leading causes of divorce that people fight over is money. So this is a great idea to help you with your wedding planning, but also to get you and your partner in that mindset of how are we going to make money moves together. You want to talk about who's paying for what, if you guys are merging finances, if anybody outside of the couple is going to be helping you guys, and basically anything like that should be talked about in this stage. And make sure you guys are both on the same page with each part of the budget. It wouldn't be fair for either person to feel like they were being told what to do with their money. Once you finish the budget, you're going to want to put it in the very front of your binder just to make sure you're constantly reminded of how much you want to be spending. Step four is ordering free invite samples. Ah! I used Zola, Shutterfly, and Minted. I didn't have to give any credit card information, I just got sent free samples and it was really helpful to figure out where you're going for wedding invites. There's nothing like seeing it with your own eyes and touching it with your hands and feeling the quality of the paper. Shutterfly sent a lot of pretty things with foil, I really like the artwork on the RSVPs. Zola gave so many samples and a lot of pretty artwork was showing personalized photos that you can do. I really like the thank you cards. It also had a wedding timeline which was super helpful. Minted was by far the prettiest just by the packaging alone. It came in a box and it showed every type of paper they have and descriptions of everything. It was just really detailed and I really knew everything they offered and they even gave so many samples. The styles and paper quality stood out to me more compared to the other two and I really appreciated the thought they put into the packaging. Even if you're making your own wedding invites, which I'm probably going to end up doing, it's still really good to see ideas and to have a backup plan in case your DIY invites go haywire. Another great thing about these free invite samples is that they always send coupons with the samples. And this gives you an opportunity to start using that wedding email. There you guys go, the first four essential steps to planning a wedding. I hope this helps you. I'm gonna be making a lot of videos on how to plan a wedding, but I thought this was a really good first video to kind of get you guys into wedding mindset. So make sure you subscribe to see more wedding content. Like this video so I know it helped you guys and comment anything you'd like. I hope you have fun planning a wedding and I'll see you next Saturday.